We have a pretty big move here. The o Oakland Athletics have traded for Starling Marte in exchange for Jesus Lazardo. This is a pretty big trade and a pretty big callback for the Miami Marlins just for a rental player. So that's what I'm going to talk about in today's video. But before you get into this video, 92% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So go ahead, get your life together, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and leave a like. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video talking about this trade. And we've got some other trades to talk about, including the Astros getting Kittle Graveman from division rival Seattle Mariners. And we've got the Yankees possibly selling with this trade of the Reds acquiring Luis Sessa and Justin Wilson from the Yankees, just for a player to be named later. And the Mariners are acquiring Tyler Anderson from the Pirates. We originally thought that it was going to be the, the Phillies that were going to get Tyler Anderson, but that trade did not happen. So yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about in today's video. Let's go ahead and start off with this trade here between the Oakland Athletics and the Miami Marlins. Now, the Athletics have already made a trade this deadline, getting Andrew Chapin, which was their big focus, but they do need outfield help as well. And Raymond Laureano, I don't really know where he's going to go with this move. I, I would assume he's just going to slot over in right field is kind of what they're doing here with this trade. But they have to give up an awfully lot to, to get Starling Marte here, who is just going to be, like I said, a rental who does have some postseason experience, but yeah, Loriano is going to be moved to right field from what Fangraphs is saying, and he's going to be in center field. So, but while they gave up a lot to get him, and this was an overpay, I think. I think it was a big, big overpay to get Starling Marte here. Jesus Lazardo, if you were really willing to give him up, he's your most valuable asset, and trading him to the Cubs? I think the Cubs would have loved to have a guy like Jesus Lazardo. But they don't get the chance. And um, I, I'm really curious why they felt like this was um, a trade that needed to happen. I know that Jesus Lazardo has not been very good this year. But we know how good Jesus Lazardo is. Um, he's currently with the Oakland Athletics AAA team, which will probably just go to the um, go to the Marlins AAA team. But the Marlins, man, they love their pitching. And they get another guy here. He's been, he's had a two and four record with a six point eight seven ERA in the majors this year, and a two and two record with a six point five two ERA in AAA this year. So yeah, but Laz Lazardo still has a ton of potential, and this Marlins rotation absolutely stacked. You've got Alcantara, Lopez, and Taylor Rogers already, and you're going to be adding Jesus Lazardo in that rotation. And you're going to be adding a Max Meyer in that rotation and Edward Carrera. Like, this rotation is absolutely stacked for the future. And maybe you could have requested a hitter, but it seems like the Athletics were willing to give up a lot for Starling Marte. And I know Starling Marte is a good player, but giving up Jesus Lozardo, who's got way more control than Starling Marte does, seems a little crazy. When I highly doubt that the Athletics will re-sign him after this season with how cheap they are. And it just doesn't seem like they're going to re-sign him after this season. The hot stove is hot right now, though, with the Athletics trading for Starling Marte. When I saw Jesus Lazardo, I was like, huh? Because it's an overpay. I, I didn't expect the Athletics to get him in, in the first place, um, get Starling Marte. But wow, this is absolutely a, a crazy trade here. Miami will be sending significant... Um, money along with with Starling Marte to Oakland, which, I mean, they're going to be getting a really good prospect back, though. So they should be fine with that. But Jesus Lazardo, like, that's still a great trade for the Marlins. I think that this is a good trade for both teams. I think for the Athletics, though, you did give up, like, quite a bit too much, I personally think. Um, you, you gave up quite a bit too much get, giving up Jesus Lazardo. Now, I know that Starling Marte, like I said, is obviously the better player right now. But Jesus Lazardo has a ton more upside, and the Athletics probably will not re-sign him. He already declined a $30 million extension offer from the Marlins. I, I just don't see this. But what it does for the Athletics this season, that's what we're really wondering about. Because it doesn't do a ton to the Marlins this year. Um, I don't – I mean, the Marlins aren't going to be making the playoffs. He's probably going to be with their AAA team. But for Oakland, this is a move – just like the Astros made yesterday, they got Kendall Graveman. This is a move to, 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 to kind of try to 
at least get closer with the Astros. They're not close to the Astros in that division, in my opinion. They are a wild card team. They're they're not winning that division. Like, don't even start thinking that they're going to win the division. They have a good lineup, though, especially if Matt Chapman starts playing a lot better than he has been. He has been playing just bad this year on the offensive side, but he's been good defensively. And, um, I mean, you've got Matt Olson, you've got Starling Marte, you've got Mark Cannon, you've got Jed Lauer, who's been really, really good this year. Um, Sean Murphy, who's incredibly underrated. And the starting pitching rotation is pretty good as well. Um, they're still, I would assume they're still going to be in the market for Craig Kimbrell or Richard Rodriguez. Um, it was, I saw yesterday that they did have some interest in getting um, a Richard Rodriguez. But I think that they definitely, you had another bullpen arm, and this team could be a pretty dangerous team. Now, I don't see them as a real, real contender still, as a team that I think is really a World Series contender. I, I surely do not think that. I think they're a wild card team that if they have to face the Rays in the wild card game, they're going to get bounced out. If they have to face the Red Sox in the wild card game, they're going to get bounced out. I think even if they have to face the Yankees in the first in the wild card game, because I just don't think they're winning the division, then I don't see the Athletics winning. If the Blue Jays somehow make a crazy move and get there, then maybe. I mean, may, maybe they beat the Blue Jays, but, I mean, I don't know. I think that's going to be awfully hard for the Athletics to go anywhere besides the wild card game this year, honestly. So, my grades for both teams. I, I'm, I'm going to give the Marlins an A for this one. Like, this is a good trade. I'm going to give the Athletics a B. I think that the Marlins did win this trade. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go to the next trade here. And we have got the Astros acquiring K Kendall Graveman and Rafael Montero from the Mariners in exchange for third baseman Abraham Toro and right-handed pitcher Joe Smith. For Houston, this is a huge trade. You get a bullpen arm, which you have needed all year. You get Kendall Graveman, who was a guy that wasn't expected to be available with how good the Mariners have been recently. But they're... I mean, they're right in it right now. I mean, the Mariners, they win a couple more games, and they're right in there as a wild card team, possibly. And they're trading Kendall Graveman, who has had a less than one ERA this year, for Abraham Toro and Joe Smith. I just cannot understand this from the Mariners' side of things. The Mariners have not made the playoffs in a long time. And when you do get a chance to make the playoffs, what you do is you trade Kendall Graveman, your best relief pitcher, who's had a less than one ERA. No. You don't deserve to be winning any type of anything doing that. It's it's ridiculous why they would even think of doing something crazy like that. Um, Kendall Graveman has been great this year, and they trade him away and it's and get Tyler Anderson. Uh no. And the package in return, Joe Smith, who has been decent, but like he's not gonna make a big difference in this trade. Abraham Toro, why? I mean, I, I don't know why you trade for him. So, Kendall Graveman, Rafael Montero, and Ryan, or Ryan Presley in in the um, in the seventh, eighth, and ninth could be dangerous. I think that Rafael Montero actually is going to be the sneaky guy in this trade. He had a good 2020 last year with the Rangers, and I think that he definitely could be the sneaky piece in this trade. That actually puts the the um, Astros over the top. Not to mention that Alex Bregman's going to be coming back pretty soon. Justin Berlander maybe can come back this year, um, depending on where they get. Um, Pedro Baez maybe even could come back this year. Like they they have some guys that could come back as well, and we know that they can hit the cover off the baseball with or without the trash cans. I I know people are going to talk about the trash cans. They can still hit the cover off the baseball without the trash cans with Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve, y Yuli Gurriel, Carlos Correa, Michael Brantley, Kyle Tucker. They've got a ton of guys that can just hit the baseball. But like I said, for the Mariners, what are you doing here? I, I just cannot understand what you're doing. Let's keep it on with the Mariners talk. The Mariners have acquired... Tyler Anderson, left-handed pitcher from the Pirates in exchange for a catcher, Carter Benz, and Joaquin Tejeda. So, yeah, Tyler Anderson here. 
going to the Mariners in this trade. This is an interesting one for the Mariners. Like I said, he was originally going to go to Philadelphia, but apparently the Pirates had concerns about one of the prospects they were going to be getting in return, and that's why the trade fell through. So Seattle gets another starter here, which they do need another starter, but their bullpen obviously is not nearly as good because you give up Kittle Graveman. Um, but Tyler Anderson in the back end of this rotation is not bad at all with how good he's been this year. I think that your rotation looks a lot better with Kikuchi, Gilbert, Gonzalez, and Flexen with how good he's been this year. They picked him up as a free agent from the KBO this year, and Chris Flexen has been really, really good. But Tyler Anderson, is at, at the number five, I think is pretty solid now. Like I said, the bullpen got significantly worse, but they've had a really good bullpen this year, and they've been – been able to develop pitchers really well this year, um, just getting pitchers out of nowhere. And, yeah, so I, I didn't like the trade of giving up Kendall Graveman at all, but getting Tyler Anderson is a positive in return. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about the Cincinnati Reds acquiring Luis Sessa and Justin Wilson for, from the Yankees for a player to be named later. This is an interesting trade. Are the Yankees going to be sellers? Because they just lost two of some pretty important bullpen arms here in Luis Sessa and Justin Williams. And obviously, the Reds need bullpen help. And they get bullpen help here. So maybe they are selling at the deadline. But you lose a lot of depth there in, in your bullpen because of this trade. So... This could be a hint that the Yankees are selling at the deadline. This move kind of surprised me a little bit. Kind of, I was like, huh? Because I didn't expect it to happen. But for the Reds, you've got to like this trade a lot. You give bullpen help, which I thought that they were really going to be struggling to get bullpen help, considering that the best two um, guys that they could get would be in their division, being, being Richard Rodriguez and Craig Kimbrell. So... For this Reds team, like you get two more relievers, which helps a lot considering how bad their bullpen's been this year. Their bullpen has been horrible. Probably the worst in baseball, I think we can all say. Justin Wilson's a good arm. Luis Sesto's a good arm. Michael Gibbons, though, from the Rockies, I think is a really sneaky good arm that um, that could um, that could be very good. The Rockies, in return for Michael Gibbons, will – Receive a right-hander, Noah Davis, who's made 13 starts in cla cla with their Class A advanced affiliate in 2021. With a 3.6 area, so maybe he'll be pretty good. And the Rockies will reacquire right-hander Case Williams from the Reds. Um, so, yeah. Um, getting Michael Givens is a pretty, pretty big move here as well. You booster your bullpen a lot here. Getting them... We knew the only thing with the Reds that they need is relief pitching. And um, because you've got starting pitching with Sonny Gray, T Tyler Malley, Luis Castillo, he's been great over the last month or so after starting out as the worst pitcher in baseball this year. You've got the hitting with Winker and Castellanos and Eugenio Suarez and all of them. And, yeah, so for the Reds, you boost your bullpen a lot here. I think that it's a good move getting um, him. But for the Yankees, I don't see the logic behind this trade. So, yeah, those are the trades as of right now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and turn notifications because, like I said, 92% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So, go ahead, get your life together, hit that subscribe button, turn notifications, and leave a like. Thank you for watching, and peace.